to the Keep Learning podcast. My name is Alicia Siska. And I'm Matthew Mesley. And today we're talking about writer's block. Matthew, how do you feel about this topic? Um, unlike um, reader's block, which we talked about um, previously, um, writer's block is something that I've definitely struggled with um, previously. I don't know about you. Mm. Um, and I think it can be something that we will that everyone sort of might struggle at some point um, during their degree or afterwards. Um, So yeah, yeah, I think it's a really um, important topic to think about, particularly in terms of, you know, what we sometimes struggle with in terms of learning. Um, But I know you've got some information about this. I mean, what's the story behind Writer's Block? Yeah, there is a a story. Uh, There's a certain history of looking at writer's block because now obviously it's something that most people have probably experienced or at some point in their not only studies but professional life as well. Um, But also something everyone kind of has a say about. Uh, But it does have a long history with famous writers admitting to suffering from it and even artists like I think most recently Adele openly talked about it. Um, But in the past it was actually attributed to all sorts of dark forces and (laughs) writer's curses you know Uh, until uh, I believe the 1940s when this phenomenon was first actually named and interestingly it was named by a psychologist and his name was Edmund Burglar and he uh, kind of propelled uh, uh, other scientists to start uh, doing research on it which kind of began in, in, in earnest in the 1970s But because uh, Burglar was um, uh, a psychoanalyst, he defined it through psychoanalysis. So, of course, it was linked to sexuality and your love life, (laughs) unfulfilled love life, and also to mothers. You know, mothers are at the root of all evil, apparently, right? It's interesting how a lot of these kind of concepts seem to be cut, come out of psychology or, or a yeah. few of them at least. Um, yeah, yeah, they, they, it has shifted, obviously. No one makes these links anymore, thank uh, God. luckily. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now we link it obviously to problems with inspiration, um, the pressure to produce. And this is especially acute for writers who have previously had a successful publication, right? And now they are kind of afraid of uh, 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 not being able to match the same quality. Uh, Personal problems, maybe general stress, because stress is known to disrupt certain areas of the brain, which then lead to limiting creativity, et cetera. Uh, But also, you know, what I found really interesting is that some researchers define writer's block as excuses. (laughs) You know, that's not, not fair funny. I know <laughs> I know but I actually put it into PubMed because because you know it started with psychology there's a lot of scientific literature on it mm-hmm. and PubMed gave me 37 articles you know uh, wow. uh, talking about it yeah from the scientific perspective and then I thought hold on so what about art and humanities where you know you have more kind of writers, writers um, uh, in those fields. And then so on JSTOR, which is my favorite database. (laughs) (laughs) Controversial. I I know, (laughs) but you know what? Almost Mm. two and a half thousand results on just on writer's block on JSTOR. So it's definitely a a massive uh, issue. And uh, I think, you know, we stopped looking at it as a syndrome or some sort of illness or disease. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to be honest, uh, again, when you Google it, uh, because I just kind of, I was really interested how people see it. And you you have lots of memes out there on writer's block. (laughs) And some of these memes, in fact, dispute the very existence of it it's like there's no such thing as writer block writer's block just get over it <laughs> well that might be one way of, of trying to overcome it I suppose and getting rid I, of the power. Actually, you know what you know my favorite book on writing uh, by William Zinser on writing well has 
just one mention on, of writer's block. Interesting. Yes, and this is what he says, um, that writing has deep psychological roots. The reasons why we express ourselves as we do or fail to express ourselves because of writer's block are partly buried in the subconscious mind. So he makes the same reference to psychology. And then he says, there are many kinds or as many kinds of writer's block as there are kinds of writers. And I have no intention of trying to untangle them. This is a short book and my name isn't Sigmund Freud. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. I think it's really interesting though, because I think we think of writer's block as, you know, um, you know, writer's block isn't the cause, is it? Often it is linked to, like you said, um, pressure that you might be under or the expectations that you have yeah. um, or that are put upon you. You know, you might have got a first um, for a first assignment and then you're like, right, well, I need to get another uh, first for this assignment. And, um, and I know for me, it was linked to um, ideas of, you know, or, or think, you know, ideas of perfectionism about sort of worrying that everything I wrote wasn't good enough or wasn't yeah. uh, and I think um to some extent it's about thinking and uh, mentally saying to ourselves well it's you know it can it's fine that it's going to be simple or basic to begin with because everyone goes through that mm. sort of process I don't know if that's yeah. if you if you suffered from writer's block if there have been particular reasons like that too yeah, okay, so this really resonates with me. But to me, the greatest, so I generally I wouldn't suffer with writer's block because once I know I have something to do, I just kind of get it done. I'm like a little tank. That's that amazing. But, machine. <laughs> machine, yes. But actually, uh, the only circumstances under which I suffered from uh, writer's block were to do with my self-doubt. In, in the fact that I have something to say that others want to hear or read about. Every time I resisted writing, it was because I felt, no, this has already been done. Um, there's no point. No one will read it. Or, you know, it's just a, the lack of, uh, of confidence in what I was intending uh, to write. So that was the only thing that ever kind of stopped me. But that self-doubt, I think, is very real among yeah, yeah. writers and among students as well. Because, you know, when you think about, you know, how it relates to academic life, obviously, you know, we're not professional writers. Writing is part of what we do. And the same, it's part of being a student, but it's not just the only thing that uh, defines uh, the, the, the university experience, is it? Yeah, and I think those kind of um, feelings of self uh, of self doubt or not thinking that you know might something might you know people might not want to read that that can be really you know difficult when you know when you're trying to then start off a piece of writing. Um, so I think yeah, I think uh, as we've talk talked about that writer's block is linked to all these other things, aren't they? Yeah, and I think we need to add a few more probably things like, you know, maybe the rules of academic writing may produce a, a block in someone, yeah, uh, because it's not seen as a natural way of writing and therefore um, perceiving writing through those rules seems like, you know, you're starting from impediments instead of from the, 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 the knowledge, the content uh, no. that you want to uh, express yeah and you mentioned negative feedback as well yeah. before right if you or if you received very positive feedback and then you want to match it or very negative feedback and then it feels like well what's, what's the, the point? point yeah 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 um, I think most lecturers are not trying to give you negative feedback on hopefully they're they're not but sometimes it can it can feel like that can't it when mm -hmm. you're yeah um but often they will be sort of you know pointing out what you know how you can improve or what you might want to sort of aim for mm -hmm. um but sometimes it can seem like a lot and I think it's again with a lot of what we're saying is breaking that kind of feedback down isn't it yeah um and that yeah, might and help yeah and and harnessing it right trying to actually use it instead of being put off by it and feeling it as if this is a judgment on me it's a judgment on a piece of writing on words on the page right rather than on us as people but it's so easy to take it personally and be discouraged by it so that element of being unmotivated 
yeah, to do something or demotivated due to something else. Uh, and I think we should also not uh, forget about distractions, all the distractions oh, definitely. we have in life yeah, that can create that writer's block as well. Yeah, and I think sometimes it, 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 it's about keeping concentration, isn't it? Um, uh, in, uh, you know, w- when your phone is near you or, you know, your emails are going and things like that, it's sort of making sure you're almost creating an environment in which you can sit down and concentrate on something for a, for, for a ta- you know, for a, you know, a good amount of time, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So actually, that's a, the first strategy that we could yeah. consider is uh, to address writer's blog. It's maybe even moving uh, to a different place where you can write. So do you have to sit at the same desk uh, or in the same bed or on the same chair? Maybe moving uh, to a different place can unlock something or can make you feel differently about your writing. Have you ever tried that? Um, I, well, I normally have a, I like having sort of a study area where I do, do sort of my work in and then um, it doesn't pollute my other areas. <laughs> kind of. Um, I think also sometimes it's, it's useful to take away things from your study environment. So, you know, like putting your phone maybe away um, yeah. for half an hour or an hour or so, um, or, you know, um, making sure that there aren't sort of distractions nearby like loud noises and things and obviously sometimes if you're you know in at the moment if you're with your family or with you know um if you're you know caring or you have children it can be difficult to mm. to avoid those um distractions yeah, um certainly. you know what i found myself doing what before a, a, a writing task that I clear my desk or rearrange things on my desk oh, and like sometimes quite drastically uh, in the sense, you know, remove stuff that, you know, uh, needn't be there because sometimes we kind of tend to accumulate. Yeah. Or is, re- or is related to another task. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you don't want to be distracted from something else that you might have been working on. You just want to focus on something new or something different. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think that's really important. What about other strategies then? Well, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I think where I need to start, because that's absolutely the first thought that comes to mind to me and when it, uh, it concerns writer's blog, is that blank screen or a blank piece of page, yeah, which could be our item of today. <laughs> <Ta-da>! <laughs> <laughs> this is... This is a metaphor or symbol uh, of, of writer's block to me. Staring at the blank screen is absolutely the worst. And the only way really for it not to intimidate us is to fill it with something. Yeah. But of course, that first word is the hardest. Um, but but this, is, this is really, really crucial to me. Starting, um, and here I want to mention one kind of core tenet of stoicism. Uh, which was uh, written by Marcus Aurelius. I don't know, have you, have you read Meditations by Aurelius? I can't say I have. Okay, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's not finished because it's a, it's a, the kind of um, reading, I actually listened to it as an audiobook and I occasionally would snooze because uh, of the way it was. Oh, uh, that's quite a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's really good if you have the patience for just too much like there's a nugget after nugget after nugget you know of of uh, really uh, potent knowledge and ideas but anyway so what he's uh, the, the thing that he said that really stuck with me um is that what stands in the way becomes the way that the impediment to action advances action and um and indeed um, in terms of the writing block, to me, the only thing to do it, to um, overcome it, is to just start writing. Yeah. And it seems almost counterintuitive because, well, but I have a block. So how can I start writing if I have a block? But there are some um, uh, strategies um, such as free writing or clustering that 
can be used to um to trick your mind basically isn't it basically yeah because free writing what is it really you you set up um you know your timer for even something like 10 minutes and and just write and the idea is to um um to just write (laughs) and not stop writing and the only rule is not to stop writing and it's uh, uh, writing about writing or it could be writing about not writing how it feels not to be able to write maybe just broadcasting everything that's going on in your head which is obviously always full of thoughts yeah so it's like jotting down this chatter that that's constantly yeah i know actually i have a number for you apparently we produce sixty-five thousand thoughts a day Okay. That seems, <laughs> that seems impressive. That seems far more than my 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 amount of thoughts. No, I, it's just that we, we don't even realize it, right? They I just... must be at the bottom level. <laughs> well, I didn't say these are valuable thoughts. <laughs> In fact, I would say probably most of them are completely rubbish and they only actually um hinder us and, and make us feel really bad about about ourselves but we constantly churn them it's like you know a a constant chatter in our head and it's really difficult to not do it and and stop and not think about anything right but so basically the idea of free writing would be to harness it and okay just just start writing about whatever's on your mind and um, the the idea of it is that eventually you'll hit these thoughts that are actually relevant to the topic itself and then you'll be on your way to... I think, I think that could be... Re- I mean, I think... I wish I had known about free writing when I did my master's or my PhD because I think it, you know, it takes the worry out of that kind of idea that everything I need to write has to be, you know, amazing or yeah. of a scholarly level. Um, you know, you uh, it, take, it, it also stops you from being overwhelmed at sort of starting... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I think so I think it can be really uh, I, I wish I had I'd known yeah. about it but I think it I mean I think it's a good idea and it means that you can also like you said hopefully um, but you know, I, I wouldn't worry if um, it, it didn't but you know you can go through and see if there are some gems then within that um, but also, there are always some yeah, gems. Norm- yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and but even if they're there you know even if it's not perfect and it's not you know like um material that you you use in the end it will have started the process won't it and i think yeah. that is what exactly that's the point just to un- if it's a block let's just unlock it yeah let's just open this door just a crack and then it will just swing open because all these thoughts will want to be released <laughs> in a way yeah uh, so so free writing is good and i think that clustering is something very similar um, and it's more related maybe to mind mapping. So for people who like um, doing things in a more kind of spatial way. So clustering, I think it's about, you know, putting, writing um, a word in the middle of the paper and then related words or ideas around it. So producing free associations um, uh, to generate ideas and see maybe how many uh, directions the writing could go into. So basically, I think both of these are kind of um, aligned with this idea that we learn by doing. Yeah? So once we start doing, we stop staring at a blank page. Um, I think clustering also really links to the the importance of planning, doesn't it? About yeah. how um, often, you know, don't think that planning isn't work. It is. It's a really it's a really important part. But I think that sometimes people think, oh, I need to get to the writing immediately. Mm -hmm. But often the planning um, stage will give you that scaffold or framework, which which then it's so much easier to start writing or to have that content. Um, on the Because you know what you want to write. Yeah. It's, it's just as simple as that, isn't it? And even when you are in the process of writing, but you hit a sort of um, a, a stop, you can then maybe think, right, well, why am I having this problem? Could I go back and plan this paragraph out a bit more? Like, what do I need to sort of include here? Mm-hmm. So I would also think that, you know, planning doesn't have to only be at the beginning. It can be throughout as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, completely.
I agree. Uh, planning, I, I, I can't do any writing without planning because if I don't do planning, then I start going on all sorts of tangents <laughs> because you know I'm not in control of my writing. And for some writing, like creative writing, obviously, fair enough, that's exactly what needs to be done perhaps with some types of writing. But in terms of uh, producing academic essays where knowledge needs to be organized and structured, etc., cetera, it's, um, it's, it's better to be in control of what we're producing. <laughs> One other thing that I found helpful with me um, when I used to struggle was also putting down things in bullet points I don't know or like you know starting with a few bullet points starting perhaps with a quotation although being careful with that or starting with a reference even you know just having something on the page mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, that you can sort of work with uh, yeah. that can often help too yeah and so, so you mentioned a quotation or a reference. So it's it's a reference point, which is a thought, yeah? And then you yeah. can expand on that thought. But I know that some people really like by st to start writing with an image as well. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, you can even, if you're a visual person like this, it may be really inspiring to, you know, select an image that um, is related to your writing and, and think about... Um, about it uh, and the complexity of it and what it actually tells you about the issue that you're trying to address in in that particular essay so image or you know quotation or anything that will provoke idea yeah, spare you on yeah yeah and uh, has the uh, you know uh, uh, it also has the benefit of putting something on the page as well doesn't it yeah so. putting something on the page but also i think writing the writing itself is what often cl uh, creates clarity because we mm -hmm. sometimes you know start um on the project on this writing project and we're like but i don't know where i'm going with this I, it's unclear am my I, I i don't know about my argument etc but as you write things start emerging uh, in a way and and uh, start so slotting into place don't they yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you can kind and you start to see if you didn't have a very clear direction or didn't know what your argument, you know, a strong idea of what your argument is going to be, you start the more and more you write, you start seeing how it hangs together to, to yeah. you, and what you can do to maybe push it or improve it. Um, and I think I suppose one of the things that I think is a, is useful. Um, in terms of writer's block is not necessarily just sitting down and thinking I have to add words to this assignment or I have to add content. It might be about thinking, um, right, I need to try and strengthen the analysis in this um, section or I need to um, make the structure clearer. And that might not necessarily add in terms of word count, but it's still doing things in terms of improving um, uh, and refining your work. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. Um, yeah, and uh, so what you're talking about here is this kind of task-orientated writing, right? Where, uh, where you, you sit down to write for a particular reason, to achieve a particular um, yeah. goal. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's very effective, I find, as well. And and then I think when you do it this way, then you can schedule very short periods of writing, yes? So you can sit down, oh, okay, just just 20 minutes today, but I'm only sitting down for 20 minutes to achieve this, yeah, to fix yeah. this one paragraph or to add evidence in these in, to these two points. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to do because, you know, it's just 20 minutes. It's not a massive time commitment. Uh, and the task is very specific and therefore may be easier to achieve. Yeah. And I think you also feel like a sense you can tick something off or yeah. at least, you know, <laughs> get, you know, you've got to push that a bit further so um, yeah. it can feel yeah. productive. That, that feels really good if you can. <laughs> um, how about other strategies? Do you have any more? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have one big one as well, which is always start with the second paragraph. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I think it's really intimidating to start with the introduction. Uh, because even, I think even if we have a good plan for, for an essay, it can still change in the writing process. And so we may introduce something 
that actually won't be accomplished. We accomplish something else while writing, but that's when we have a plan. But what if we don't have a plan? We're staring at the blank page. We don't have a plan in terms of what to write and we have to introduce it. And I think this can be really um, off-putting because you don't know what you don't know. You can't introduce something that doesn't exist. So I always try myself as well to start with the second paragraph and just develop one point and then see where it takes you and then another, another. And once you're done, writing that introduction based on what you have already written um, is going to be so much easier. I like that. I, I have to admit, I am one of those weird people that do write, that does start with the introduction. But I think that might be another reason why I've <laughs> suffered with writer's block in the past. I also think sometimes my my the, my first introduction or my first attempts at introductions don't actually end up being in the introduction anyway. So yeah. um, if yeah. that makes sense. That is, that is really important. Yeah. So even if you do write that introduction, revisit it <laughs> come yeah. back to it and check if it's actually doing the job that it's supposed to be doing yeah. but certainly I think I think I like your point because it because starting at the introduction is is giving you that extra pressure sometimes isn't yeah. it so if you are struggling with um writer's block I think it's it's really useful to 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 reduce as much of that pressure as possible and that's why starting at, uh, from the paragraph the second paragraph would be w I think would be helpful yeah do you have any secret strategies we haven't um i think we've covered quite a, a quite a lot of them in terms of yeah we've we've covered sort of bullet points um free writing um not starting with the introduction um well uh one thing that we didn't quite mention was reg uh, scheduling maybe regular time to write because sometimes I think sometimes the lack of time, which we all complain about, because uh, do we have enough time for anything? No, there's never enough time for anything. Um, and it becomes sometimes an excuse not to get things done. And, you know, I admit to it. I have used it in the past. I, I think everyone uses it at some point. But um, um, kind of facing it and addressing it and thinking, OK, but there is that time. It's just about how I organize it, how I think about it. So scheduling a regular time to write in short bursts, because short bursts of time can be much more productive than longer days. So we can say, oh, I'll write this essay on a Saturday. And then you have the entire Saturday uh, to write it. And then you start start procrastinating because there's a million other things. Yeah, I know I've been procrastinating baking, procrastinating cleaning, uh, procrastinating all sorts of things. right? <laughs> and, and all of a sudden that day actually goes because it feels like a long time, but uh, it's so easy to waste it. But if I know that I only have one hour on a Friday afternoon, to write something or half an hour on a Thursday and I schedule these shorter bursts of time to uh, to do it, I am so much more productive. And actually, you know, I come at it from the point of view of, I only have this time, I need to accomplish a lot, boom, I'm just going to go like, you know, uh, 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 without any obstacles. I don't have time for distractions. I'm just, yeah. you know. And that way day. you can also spend the rest of the time doing something else that you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. something more relaxing or yeah. you know um but yeah I really like that idea of um giving giving yourself a, a, a well a, a scheduling in specific times because like you said that I, I've done that before and it has pushed me to get something done um you know it does you don't have to have finished something during that yeah. time but you know it can get you to you know it can push you to um so it's concentrate on yeah. what you need to get done um, or what needs to be finished or, or, or just like this needs to be done at this level. I'm not going to try and get it done perfectly. I'm just going to get, try and get it done. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just have something done. It's like, uh, again, we, we mentioned before, uh, uh, you know, chunking things and or deconstructing, uh, uh, breaking down uh, into smaller, smaller elements. So if it's a long written assignment, break it down into paragraphs and just focus on writing this one paragraph today. Right? Yeah, 
I think a, a, a sort of a final thing that can often be really useful is knowing that you're around or surrounded by people who are writing too. Obviously, that is a little bit difficult um, um, at the moment, but the great thing is that there are sort of digital spaces that um, where you can go and uh, write and there are other people writing there too, such as Alicia set up a shut up and write um, yeah. what, uh, re reading, a writing retreat, isn't it? Or Yeah, yeah. So we uh, meet every Friday at 1 p.m. for one hour and we use the, the classic Pomodoro, you know, um, approach Pomodoro technique where you um, set up a timer for a particular amount of time and uh, start writing and don't stop until the break uh, and then take a little break and then start again until you are asked to stop. And again, it's uh, extremely effective uh, because um, Really, I mean, among the, all the students who come, thousands of words are produced every Yay. week. So um, writing in the company of others, but even, you know, discussing because yeah. criticality is a, is a social phenomenon, right? Or thinking about ideas is very important and, and supporting each other that, that can generate ideas and inspire uh, uh, to writing. So that's uh, that, that group um that group of influence can be really, really positive. But you know what? I have one more kind of secret weapon that I use <laughs> <laughs> when I feel stuck and uh, I feel that writer's block. I'm intrigued. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I actually use uh, mindfulness meditation, uh, okay. which basically is just sitting quietly for just a few minutes and um, analyzing my thoughts and like uh, thinking about why am I blocked? You know, what's going on there? What's the problem? You know, like uh, it's kind of facing it and and talking to it. It's like, OK, I hear you. I see you. You're there. Writer's block. Uh, but yeah, let's 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 get it done. Let's let's do it together. So it's just this kind of moment of reflection and and um, calm and, um, uh, you know, focus on now we're shifting attention to that task let's start writing and usually it just kind of provides this emotional release where you know uh, you would be tense uh, before because there's a deadline or you know you're working towards some sort of a um, stressful um, requirement uh, but this releases it and helps you to be in the moment and kind of make the most of it it's like this is the only time in my life when I'm doing it this way let's grab it, <laughs> let's, sounds, let's go with it. sounds really powerful I may have to find out a bit more about this technique from you <laughs> okay yeah let's have a conversation about it but you know it, it does kind of bring us full circle to where we started with this um, stoic attitude that you know what blocks the path is the path indeed and um, maybe even sometimes acknowledging it uh, can provide this opportunity to it takes the power away doesn't it if yeah, you yeah, acknowledge yeah, yeah. Um, so the obstacle is the way just keep <laughs> well i think that's you know there's the, that's that uh, sort of our, our discussion that's packed full of tips and advice so hopefully people will find that useful yeah. Um, and obviously you don't need to to use all of them but you may find one tip um, or approach um, that will suit you yeah hopefully I mean I mean we have found something that works for us and we keep looking as well right so if we get more we'll share them <laughs> And also, I suppose, just a reminder that next week we're having our colleague, um, Jason Truscott, coming in to talk about posters. So that will be um, great. Yeah, um, and a very specific skill as well. But interesting, yeah? A yeah. Kind of visual Especially, organization of knowledge. And I think it's something that, um, you know, a lot more, you're seeing a lot more of this as part of assignments um, and part of, um, you know, lecturers are putting this as, as, as a different kind of assessment so yeah, it will be yeah. useful and across different disciplines not, not you know in in those standard disciplines that it used to be okay well don't forget keep learning
keep learning and you know you can subscribe to the podcast on youtube and on itunes so you don't miss any of the conversations see you thank you for watching Thank <music> you.